Welcome. Continue the study of the indefinite integrals. In this video, we're going to see the properties of indefinite integrals. These properties, they are also valid for definite integrals. So these are the properties of integration. We're going to start from line B, in which we want to find, we want to know how to find the integration of constant that is multiplying a function. Whenever we have a constant multiplying a function, we have to put the constant outside, and then we solve the integral without that constant. So this is how we would solve. Say for example you have 36y cot of x this all dx and you want to find what is the result of this. Now see this is integration with respect to x so whatever is not with respect to x is treated as a constant. So we're going to have here 36y outside is treated as a constant and inside we're going to have cot of x dx now the result of this is 36y integration of cot of x is natural log of sine of x so this is going to be natural log of sine of x what this means is that if you find the derivative of this you're going to get back this if you want proof we can have natural log d by dx derivative of this we want to see if it's going to give us cot of x of sine of x we know that from the derivatives that if you want to find the derivative of log what we do is derivative of whatever is inside divided by whatever is inside so derivative of what is inside derivative of sine is cos so we have cos of x divided by what is inside is sine so divided by sine of x so as a result we have cot of x now this property here this property it looks like this one and the difference now is that whatever the function we want to integrate here is is one so this is same thing as saying we have um, first we take k which is a constant outside so I have k and then here we have a function but this function is one one dx so the integration of a constant is going to be that constant into the integration of dx. Now, one, how do we obtain one? One is obtained from the derivation of x. Derivative of x is going to be one. So with this means that if you have this, you're going to have k, the constant you had, x and plus c because you're dealing with indefinite integrals, plus c as well. Now imagine in this case here, if you have integration of a function 3x raised to 2 plus we can say second square x plus we, we, we will take this one as minus minus we can say 1 by 2 e raised to 4x yes dx now what the rule says, if you want to find the integration of such thing like this, if you have many functions, what you do basically is you can separate these functions into various functions and find the integral of each of them. So in this case here, we could have integration of the function f of x dx plus or minus integration of the function h of x dx. So in our case, what we'd have is integration of 3x square dx plus integration of 6 square x dx minus integration of 1 by 2 e raised to 4 x dx now this is a constant so it comes outside and then we're going to use the rule that we've used for polynomial expressions so we're going to have 3 into x increase the power by 1 so I'm going to have 3 divided by that final power I have which is 3 plus now I have here sec square of x and it's going to give us tan of x tan of x is the integral of, of, of sec square of x tan of x minus 1 by 2 this is exponential rule which we're going to have e raised to 4x divided by this constant here e raised to 4x divided by the constant which is 4 plus c because we're dealing with indefinite integrals so we simplify this and this 
and this becomes 8 so we're going to have x cube plus tan of x minus e raised to 4 x divided by 8 plus c and this this is c because we're dealing with indefinite integrals 